Hey guys, you know it's been a while since I made a YouTube video like this, or a video about cooking. And uh, you know, today I'm going to make some uh, steak sandwiches. And I'm going to do this in the tradition, um, kind of East Coast style, but in particular, uh, there's a little uh, cheesesteak stand called uh, Classic Street Food in Fremont, Seattle. Closed pretty recently. Um, and they used to make their cheesesteaks the way I'll be doing it today. And uh, I won't be using this pan or this stove. Still got to get my propane hooked up for this again. And that cilantro is not involved either. Uh, but these ingredients are... Um, usually I use a little bit cheaper of a steak. Because you're going to be shredding it up anyway before you throw it on the grill. So... I might go with something a little bit fattier since you'll be cutting around the fat and you know again you gotta chop it up so no sense getting anything too nice but this will definitely work um, and I, it doesn't take much steak I'll probably use like half of one of these to make a sandwich or two I got my crimini mushrooms over here a sweet Vidalia fresh jalapeno which I'll throw a little on the grill and some on afterwards and my little Roma tomato there and a couple buns and some mayo and this will be a short video but uh I'll be back at you in a bit. I forgot to mention a key ingredient. Of course, you have to have cheese on the cheesesteak, and I'm going to use some provolone. I think that's traditional. And come to think of it, um, I don't think they had mushrooms, uh, and maybe not tomatoes either, at that classic street food place that I like so much. Um, but they did do that, uh, these items, back at the uh, the Great Escape cheesesteak stands, which I used to eat at when I lived in Ohio. Uh, they usually have them in like the mall food courts, or they did back then anyway. Uh, but anyway, I'll be back at yeah. I also, I think I got these proportions a little off. I'm not going to need that much onion. And I'm only using like half one of these crimines, I think. Just shooting for one sandwich for the moment. You know, you cut everything real thin so that it fries up real quick in the pan. Uh, I think that's the whole idea. Or maybe I could say, uh, you know, I don't know the origins of where the cheesesteak came from, but... I wouldn't be surprised if they just cut everything real thin so they could fight up real quick, but who knows. I'm going to use about a quarter pound. Not much, you know. Get quite a bit out of one of these packages, like four sandwiches or more. That might be a little much meat too, you know. Once you throw it in with the ingre other ingredients, it ends up being quite a bit of food. I got a little bit of that fat out of there and got it chopped up. And I'm going to mention, you know, it sucks that we have to worry about uh, how the animals are treated when you go to buy some meat to eat. Uh, I would think back in the day, you could at least know that the cows were running around in a field for their whole lives and so on, that they were well cared for and, you know, eating good. You didn't have to worry about them being raised in some steel cage or whatever like you do nowadays. Um, anyway, I would have preferred to buy something a little, you know, knowing, buying something where you know exactly where it came from, but just didn't have that luxury at the moment. You know, I can guarantee you back in the day, you didn't have to be like, now Ned... Now, before I buy this beef, did you force impregnate it with a steel rod and force it to live in a cage its whole life? I have these ingredients all chopped up. Um, I'm going to heat up my grill and pretty much throw uh, the onions and the beef on there with a couple of those jalapenos right away. Wait just a little bit and then toss the shrooms on, followed by the cheese, and uh, that should be it olive oil and butter here in the pan. I always throw a little butter with the oil too because it seems like it makes it cook a little smoother and less snappy. You're not getting little spatters all over your kitchen. Yeah, somehow the butter smooths it out. I don't know. You know I'm kind of chopping this up a little more as I go too. The spatula and the knife. I think uh, you know I don't have any of those proper grill tools. You could imagine those guys using one of those big like a big heavy spatula to really chop things up as it goes. It helps it cook a little quicker or something, I don't know. If it's getting too hot, maybe toss a tiny bit of water on there. Get some of that steam going. One of those cheesesteak spots, uh, they put a bowl over the top to kind of cook it all in. I can't remember which spot that was. I guess you go all the different ones I can find. And they always have some little bottle full of something they were spraying on there. I think it is just water, but... I'll have to ask them sometime to really give it that sizzle, you know. Now that that's pretty well cooked, I'm going to toss my mushrooms on here. Maybe I should have got these on a tiny bit sooner. It'll be alright, though. I think that's about where I want to be, so I'm tossing my cheese on here. And almost there. Alright, the last step, toss the old bread on there and let it go a sec, too. Alright, that's it. And uh, I'll probably fold it together and then maybe smear a tiny bit of mayo on there. 
couple more fresh jalapenos. And I wish I had some yellow peppers, but couldn't find them at the store this time around. And uh, that's all she wrote. Uh, I hope uh, if you get a shot, it turns out as good for you as it seems like it's smelling over here for me. And uh, yeah, catch you later. Don't forget to throw your mushrooms, or sorry, your tomatoes on there too. And uh, the mushrooms, you know, I think they did have mushrooms at that uh, classic street food place. Uh, he also did deep fried mushrooms that were really good. I'll have to try doing those sometime. Anyway, catch you later. I'm still hungry, uh, so I'm gonna make some French toast. That's what I've got a got butterage for right now. Um, really simple recipe that I do. Um, you know, no fancy bread necessary. Seems like once the bread soaks up an egg, it really expands, and you know, uh, let's see, it makes it real tasty. I'm just gonna use two eggs, and to flavor it, just a tiny bit of cinnamon, just like a smidgen, and then an even tinier bit of vanilla which I'm going to just put a couple drops in with a toothpick. Uh, still not sure how much is the best amount of vanilla, but I know you don't want to overdo it. And then a little splash of lime juice too. Seems to also be a key ingredient. So you know for the cinnamon, I mean we're talking like a tiny little dusting like something like this. And then I just did like three or four little dabs with the old uh, toothpick and a vanilla. Again, still experimenting with the vanilla. Maybe a little bit more would be better, I'm not sure. But I do know one thing, um, that cinnamon it's really easy to overdo it with the cinnamon and just make the whole thing just taste like cinnamon. So be sure you only do a little bit of that. For the lime juice though, I do put a little squirt in there. I don't know, five, ten drops. A couple other details. Um, I like to use one egg per piece of bread. Um, and you know, don't get me wrong, I'd also like to use some uh, sourdough or whatever else, but I was surprised how well this recipe, to, you know, French toast turns out with just some regular bread. So, you know, it soaks up the egg in like no time. You don't have to let it soak for like an hour in the fridge or anything like that. We're talking like a couple, you know, 30 seconds or else it gets so soggy it'll start falling apart on you. And I think since it saturates it so well, that's why it really expands so well on the grill, as you'll see in a minute. But uh, I'll go ahead and toss one of these in here and then toss the other one in over it and flip it a couple times. And then any extra egg, I like to pour over the bread while it's cooking. Or like right when you get on the grill. Maybe that's another reason it turns out so fluffy, I don't know. And as you can see, after just uh, toss these in here and flipping them a couple times, uh, it soaked up pretty much uh, the majority of that egg. So, go ahead and get these things on the grill. I just got this heating up a minute ago, it's not too hot yet. And I'm just literally going to pour the rest of this out. There's a good bit there. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put that right on top. And I'll try to get all that on there, I think. It'll take just about all of it, at least it did last time. Nice thing to do is to uh, give it a little scoot right away. That way it'll keep it from sticking to the pan too much. If you can just scoot your spatula under it, that's all you really have to do. Help you keep your your grill a lot cleaner. If I wait a little too long. I always like to give it a scoot like in, like as soon as it hits the grill almost. Just move it a little bit. Anyway, be back at you in a minute. You know, if it is sticking a little bit, it's nothing that a tiny bit more butter won't solve, as well as maybe turning your heat down a tiny bit. I just did both those myself, and uh, I don't think anything will be sticking to this pan. So I always like to keep the stuff as clean as possible, you know, make cleanup easy. I got my pan really dirty on those cheese sticks, but uh, if nothing, you know, it cleans up quick enough, but I'm just trying to keep it just totally clean the whole time. Notice to, uh, if you put a little peach jam on there once they're done, oh, that's so good. I've been trying with some other jams too, but that peach is just really tasty. Go ahead and get this up. Oh, yeah. And as usual, give it a little scoot right away. Keep it from sticking. And that's a trick my old buddy Keenan told me. It's all about giving it a little scoot. And this is about done. And uh, nothing stuck to the pan too bad. I'll try to give you a good flip here. Without getting stuff everywhere. And uh, yeah, get these off the grill in a sec. 
little bit of that jam and some syrup and uh, hopefully uh, that'll do the trick on my hunger for now. Yeah, I think that's uh, a good buy for real this time, but I guess we'll see. And you can see it actually expanded pretty good for that little piece of bread. Kind of in all directions. Alright, catch you later.